Welcome to the Cross Point Southern Baptist Church Weekly Bible Study. Thank you for joining us again this week. Uh, I'm your host, Jim Hillier. Cross Point has been serving our shut in and vacationing members for over three years by live streaming our Sunday morning services on YouTube. And now it's our pleasure to also offer an online Bible study. <clears throat> Excuse me. The materials that we use in uh, both our online uh, Bible study and our uh, Sunday morning uh, in-person uh, Sunday school is uh, material produced by a company called Lifeway. Uh, it comes in a small magazine style uh, series uh, produced every three months. Uh, it's called Quarterly. Uh, it's called Explore the Bible. Uh, Right now, we are in our uh, summer 2020 uh, series on the books of Proverbs and uh, Song of Songs. Uh, the way that this uh, material comes out, it's basically uh, during each quarter, there's uh, usually one, uh, sometimes two books of the Bible covered. Uh, two if they're, if they're small, if they're, they're shorter books of the Bible. Um, but uh, it's really great material, and uh, one of the things that, that I really enjoy about this is that in the front of each issue, there is uh, there's a reading plan that uh, you know while the, the material uh, covered each week uh, is more in depth and there there's commentary around it. This is a daily plan that takes you through all of the scriptures that are covered in the uh, in the quarterly, uh, walks you through, and you, you can see here on mine, I've been using this uh, for a while. I've, been, uh, I've got quite a backlog of these uh, from over the last few years, and uh, I check off every day. I, it's part of my uh, morning Bible study time. And uh, you know, it, it, it helps me to, uh, to understand uh, the material that's covered in, on a weekly, in the weekly sections. Uh, but at the same time, it also drives me a lot of times to delve deeper into the material that's, that's presented. Uh, in fact, I keep a notebook along with this that, uh, uh, where I make notes each day uh, of you know, what that day's scripture is and uh, what it meant to me, what I got of it, how, how do I apply it to my life. And granted, like, like anybody that, that, re that reads the Bible, uh, there are a lot of days where I look at it and say, okay, I, I, I don't see anything. I don't see anything in this for me today. But a lot of times I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go through it and say, oh man, it, it really applies to what, I'm, to what I'm going through right now. And a lot of times also those kinds of things, uh, by having notes of them, I can go back later and, and look and I see how God answered those, uh, those situations through the scripture that I, that I was presented. So again, it's uh, uh, go to www.lifeway.com slash exploring the Bible. And you can order this, uh, you can order it uh, either in the CSB, which is the, uh, the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, it's the version that, that, uh, that we're currently using. It's also available in a King James and a New International version. And uh, last I heard, I believe they were working on a, uh, on a New King James version as well. Uh, don't hold me to that. I, I don't know if that if those plans ever came through, but uh, I had heard something a while back that, that they were actually working on that. Uh, but it's also not only available as a uh, as a hard copy uh, uh, booklet, but it's also available as a downloadable PDF. Uh, it's very reasonably priced, and uh, then you can have it on your. Uh, on your tablet, on your phone, you store it on your cloud drive. You can take it with you wherever you want. Uh, so if, you know, if you're traveling, you can have it right there with you. You can still uh, do your, your Bible study. You can still have the, uh, the weekly guidance and you can join. Uh, again, if you're, if you're vacationing, you can continue to join us for our, uh, our Bible studies and you can rock out the material right there with you. So again, uh, Hope that you'll continue to join us, and I and I hope that, that you'll uh, pick up the materials. So this week we are in session eight of the 2020 uh, summer series. Uh, again, looking at uh, the Old Testament books of Proverbs and Song of Songs. 
This week we will be uh, looking at Proverbs uh, chapter 15, verse 33, the last verse of that chapter, uh, going through chapter 16, verse 11. So now, if you would, uh, join me in prayer, and we'll get started on our, uh, on our Bible study. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for uh, the blessing of being able to share your word through uh, the internet. Father, we thank you for the, uh, for the blessing of your word and for the blessing of the, the wisdom that you gave to Solomon and the drive that you gave to Solomon to share his wisdom, his knowledge, that's your wisdom that uh, he would share it with us through scripture. Father, when we, again, I thank you for, uh, for the ability for, for me to share uh, that scripture with, uh, with our, our audience uh, around the world uh, with access to, uh, to YouTube. And so be with us now, Father, as we, as we get into your word and as we study scripture and uh, that you would bless uh, the hearts and minds of those who hear it and that you would touch us all. For it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. So again, this morning we're in uh, Proverbs chapter 15. Looking at verses, uh, or chapter 15, verse 33, through chapter 16, verses uh, all the way up through verse 11. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, children really enjoy pleasing uh, the people that they love. You know, they, they, it seems like they know no boundaries when it comes to showing their affection to uh, parents and grandparents and teachers and sometimes their neighbors. And um, that uh, that blessing can also uh, sometimes be a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. But at the same time, that is, it is a blessing. You know, to, and their love often prompts us to, prompts them to, uh, uh, you know, to give a hug or a kiss or a smile or just, you know, just, uh, uh, just, you know, to be, be close. I have a, I had a niece that, uh, when she was very young, she uh, uh, she always seemed to, to want to uh, uh, make my wife and I happy, and you know she, she did well. She does. She still loves us dearly. But uh, when she was young, she just she just would, would she'd just come over and stand by me. It was just, she was there. She was she was by me. She wanted to please me. She wanted to she wanted to be there and be wherever I was. You know, and kids, <laughs> kids will show their affection sometimes in the funniest ways. You know, they'll, uh, they'll try to fix breakfast for their parents, or they'll sing a new song that they learned for their grandparents. And hopefully, it's not the kind of song that they shouldn't be learning. You know, and parent, grandparent doesn't have to correct them. Uh, but again, you know, it's uh, uh, they, they do their best. So while we get started, kind of, kind of think about you know, when you were a child and and. Uh, who was it that you tried to please and and how did you try to please them and even more so why did you try to please them was it out of just out of pure unadulterated love you just you know you as the saying goes worship the ground they worked on walked on um or was it uh, you know was it that, that that if you if you did your chores and you and you made mom and dad happy that you got uh, you got candy or that uh, maybe maybe you were looking for praise from uh, from a teacher uh, that you know you wanted to be the the a number one in the class you wanted to you wanted to rise above you wanted to be uh, the the most important uh, member on the team uh, <clears throat> so kind of think about that as we get into this because our motives are the real source. I mean, in pleasing God, you know, we can we can do things, uh, we can do godly things, we can do the right thing, but a lot of times we can also do the right thing for all the wrong reasons. So let's move into our first scripture here. And this is uh, kind of sort of bookends. You know, last week we had talked about uh, some of the uh, the literary uh, uh, 
things that, that Solomon used in, in writing. And uh, last week was a prime example of this book ending effect where uh, scripture at the beginning matches scripture at the end and it kind of kind of marches in. Uh, for, for more on that, you know, just, just look up last week's uh, lesson and it, it, it very uh, uh, it goes through very well how that, how that structure works. And, but here we find him kind of doing that again. Uh, in in uh, the end of chapter 15, verse 33, says, The fear of the Lord is what wisdom teaches, and humility comes before honor. And then skipping over to, to chapter 16, verse 8, Better a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. And you, you might say, well, how do, those, how do those tie together? How does, how does uh, uh, the fear of the Lord... And, and humility tied together with righteousness. Well, it, it, it's pretty simple, straightforward, actually. Uh, first, the basis of the pursuit of God's wisdom is fear of the Lord. And we saw that at the very beginning of Proverbs, uh, that uh, you know, the, 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 the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. And <clears throat> as we've talked before, not fear as in trepidation or terror, but, but fear in, the, in uh, the context of reverence and uh, and honoring and appreciating uh, but to do that you have to have humility and the second part of that is, is the uh, uh, that the pursuit of God's wise counsel humbles the believer in order to fully trust God in order to to learn God's wisdom the first thing we have to do is realize that our wisdom our knowledge, what we think we know, you know you're probably familiar with the uh, with uh, uh, with wiki and uh, Wikipedia. Uh, look up sometimes where that came from and what what wiki means. It stands for it's a, it's four letters. It stands for what I know is, and that's how Wikipedia started. So we think we know things. We think we are wise. We think we know, but we don't. We don't have God's wisdom. And so in order to gain God's wisdom, to gain, uh, to gain insight from God, the first thing we have to do is humble ourselves and say, you know what? Um, I, may be a, I may be a fairly, a fairly bright individual. I may be, I may be, uh, you know, the sharpest pencil in the box, but I don't know everything. So we have to humble ourselves before God, and we we have to become humble, and in order to accept His His teaching and His edification of us. And and after all, that's you know, that's when we learn. When when God's teaching us things, a lot of times. He, he's teaching us first how to be broken, how to be humble, how to, how, to, how to turn over ourselves and honor him. So Solomon declares here in chapter 16, verse 8, that, that humbly revering God is more valuable than great wealth. And it is. Because if you've got God's wisdom, you've got everything else not. You've got, because you're not going to have you may not have all the wealth in the world. You may not be a, a multi-billionaire. But you will be in your heart. You will be in your relationship with God. You'll be, you will be in your relationship with your family. You will be in relationships in general. You'll be wealthy. You'll be, you'll be the, one of the wealthiest people. I, I, know, I know some people that have, that have a ton of money. Um, and they are the saddest people that I know. All they do is worry, and they, they think they're 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 brilliant. They are, they're very they're very good in business. They're very talented in business, and and they do uh, they do very well in their industry. But at the same time, when it comes to their relationships to eat, to their family to their friends, when it comes to their relationship with God. They are, they are completely miserable. And it's a matter of priorities. So we have to look at it and say, okay, 
who is, what is my priority? What, how do I measure wealth? How do I measure success? You know, so I, so I guess the question here is, is which is easier to maintain? Humility or a reverent fear of God? Mm, those are tough ones. Those are really tough. Well, humility, humility is a really, a really tricky thing. I, uh, I'll share with you something, that, <laughs> a line that my wife has, has shared with me. For, I don't know where she got it originally, but, but uh, we've bounced it back and forth for years and years and years. And that is, humility is a funny thing. As soon as you think you've got it, you've lost it. Because as soon as you think you are humble, you are no longer humble. You have become proud in your humility. So again, think about that one for a minute. Kind of, kind of, kind of let it mill around up there, uh, you know, and, and and remember that one. Feel free to use it. It's, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know where it came from. It's, it's not mine. It's not an original. It's not, it's not her original. Uh, but we picked it up somewhere over the years. That humility. As soon as you think you've got it, you've lost it. That's a freebie for today. So as we move on into, uh, into our next scripture, we look at uh, the, the idea that, that accountability has to be established. So in verse six, uh, chapter 16, uh, verse 1, and then verses 4 and 5 and verse 9. Verse 1, the reflections of the heart belong to mankind, but the answer of the tongue is from God, from the Lord, as it says here. Uh, chapter in uh, verses four and five, the Lord has prepared everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Everyone with a proud heart is detestable to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. And a person's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his step. So what we've got here basically is, uh, is, is that God, God's plan for mankind is salvation. God's, God plans a relationship with us. And that's, that's where, that, that, that's where his focus is. But our plans, how we see things, basically our plans are worthless unless first we pray about our plans. Uh, you know, true wisdom calls for an accountability, and, and God is sovereign, and his, he will hold us accountable. Uh, you know, in, in, you, you hear a lot of discussion about uh, sometimes, and we're not going to get into it this morning uh, real deeply, but you, you hear a lot about God's sovereignty and, uh, you know, that, that, that God is in charge of everything that happens and 100% and everything, good, bad, or indifferent. And, and uh, uh, so, so well, why... If God's in control of everything, even our bad thoughts, then how can we be held accountable for them? Well, he is sovereign and he is in charge and he is in command, but he also lets us have some leeway. He gives us free will. He lets us, he lets us make those decisions. He knows, he knows ahead of time what we're going to do. Doesn't mean he's going to be happy with it. Uh, but he does, he does know, and his plan, in the end, his plan will be met. And while he is sovereign, we, are, we will be held accountable. So if we, if we decide not to accept his free offer of salvation, we're going to go to hell. In the, last, in, in the, final, in the, the final analysis, in the, the final day, we're going to go to hell if we have not accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So it's, uh, and it can, it can be very confusing and, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of people will, will add confusion to it. A lot of people will, uh, uh, will ignore the confusion rather than just saying, you know, this is, it's something in scripture and it's there and we believe it. And, um, we won't have the full explanation until, uh, until the final day when we, uh, when, when we stand before him face to face. But here's the scripture that kind of kind of explains it a little bit. In Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 through 27, uh, it, it talks about God being all powerful and all knowing, and that His powerful knowledge extends to all things, past, present, and future. 
including the future decisions of his free creatures. So he knows, he knows when, if you're going to make that bad choice and drink and drive, he knows it. He, if you're going to make that bad choice in a relationship, if you're going to make that bad choice uh, of, of how you live or, or who you live with or uh, the people that you run with, he, he knows that ahead of time. He also knows he also knows why we make those decisions, and we're, we're going to get into that here in, in just a minute, that, uh, that, that he, he judges our motives. And here, you know, Solomon, he, he added that even the wicked <laughs> fall under God's sovereign rule. So, uh, you know, if you think about it, you know, wicked uh, Judas Iscariot, uh, I would say he would be considered wicked, yet he was fulfilling God's purpose because somebody was going to turn Jesus over to the Roman authorities. And it, it, was, it was Judas. It, it happened to be Judas. Uh, we see the same kind of thing, uh, and not even necessarily someone wicked, but Jonah. Take a look at, read, read the first chapter of the book of Jonah sometime. And what you're going to find is that, uh, that Jonah, God told Jonah to go preach to the Ninevites. And Jonah had Jonah had uh, Jonah had had an issue with the Ninevites, as did many of uh, many of his contemporaries. The Ninevites were considered kind of scum of the earth and uh, uh, bad people, and um, he ended up uh, he ended up getting there anyway. You know, he ran he ran the opposite opposite direction. God told him to go up to Nineveh. Instead, he went down to uh, found a ship going to Tarshish, which was basically the opposite direction. Uh, and uh, uh, who, who he ended up on a ship with was a bunch of Phoenician sailors who were Ninevites. So God's plan and God's message was shared with those people anyway. And in the long run, Jonah ends up ends up going to Nineveh and preaching at Nineveh and 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 he still rails against it even once he's there but God's purpose was fulfilled <coughs> excuse me again so when these truths are applied you know and the, the, the truth of God's sovereignty and 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 yet our free will and, and our decisions you know uh, acts 223 addresses and says though Jesus was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge you used lawless people to nail him to the cross and kill him folks Jesus getting nailed to the cross wasn't wasn't some plan B God intended that from the very beginning he he had he had things planned out from day one. So in verse five, it says everyone with a proud heart is detestable to the Lord. Be assured he he, he will not go unpunished. You know the 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 haughty heart, the uh, the, the the haughty eyes. The uh, uh, here's a few things that 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 uh, we see listed in in Solomon in the uh, uh, Proverbs from Solomon <coughs> around things that God hates arrogant eyes a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood now not notice it doesn't say hands that kill it says hands that shed innocent blood so we're not going to get it we don't don't go there don't get into the whole don't get hung up on the whole uh, uh, corporal punishment or any of that kind of thing uh, that's not what this is uh, a heart that plots wicked schemes feet eager to run to evil a false witness and one who stirs up trouble if you notice notice how these how does these march down the body he starts at the eyes and it th then it goes to the lying tongue and it goes out here to hands that shed blood and at the heart at the core of it is the heart that plots wicked schemes and then the feet that run to evil you know it's kind of interesting that it just kind of goes goes through the go, goes through the, the the whole body and 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 all the parts of us 
that can get involved in uh, in these these kinds of behaviors. So moving on, you know, we we uh, we we looked at the the sovereignty and we looked at the at the the uh, the plan and the heart. And uh, uh, next, we see that that our motives are what matter most. Uh, chapter sixteen, verse two, and then jumping over to uh, verses ten and eleven. All a person's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs motives. So, it's what's in here that counts, folks. So God's verdict is on the lips of a king, and his mouth should not give an unfair judgment. And honest balances and scales are the Lord's, and all the weights in the bag are his concern. So, it's, it's, the, it's those motives. It's those weights in the bags. It's... You know, when we when we do something, we can do the right thing for the all the wrong reasons. Uh, Romans uh, chapter fourteen verse twenty three, Paul, uh, in writing to the Romans, says that everything that is not from faith is sin. So, you could you could give money to uh, you can give Jerry you can give money to the Jerry Lewis Telethon. And if the entire reason that you were doing it was a tax write-off, that donation in itself would be sinful. You can, uh, uh, you know, you can you can donate to uh, Annie Armstrong uh, uh, missions offering. But again, if it if it's just for a tax write-off, that's not giving from the heart. That's not giving for pure motive. If you if you tithe, if you if you tithe out of a sense of that you believe that this is God's will and that you should tithe and it's the right thing to do in supporting uh, in supporting your church in supporting the ministries of your church then that's right motive if you tithe because Pastor so and so harps on tithing all the time. So in order to get Pastor so and so to to leave me alone, I'm gonna tithe. Well, that's that's not the right reason to tithe. Don't don't do it for that reason, and don't let anybody don't let any, anybody harp you into it because then again, that's not the right reason. It's the same thing. If you if you if you tithe because you know that you can get it that you can take it as a tax write off, that's a sin. Your tithe literally becomes an abomination. Think about that. You think you're doing the right thing, but you're not, because you're not because you're, it's not coming from the right place. It's not coming from the right cause. It's not coming from the right motive, and that's what God judges. God judges motive. He weighs our motives. He says, okay, you're doing it because of this. And this is why you're doing it. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. You just, you're, you want to see what you can get back out of it. That's not a right motive. You know, if you, if you, if you respect your, if you respect your elders, if you're a young person and you respect your elders and you respect police and, and you, you, uh, uh, you, you honor your teachers if you do that out of a sense of love if you do that for the right reasons then it's good if you're doing it like we like we talked at the very outset of this if you're doing it strictly so that you can raise get further up that rung that's not the right motive it's not the right motive at all and sooner or later those people with those kind of motives will pay for their wrong actions and their wrong motives and besides you know it's <laughs> it's not about doing the right thing it's about it's about believing the right thing and you know, a lot of times uh, people think that they can they, they can work their way to heaven you can't you cannot we as human beings are frail we are faulty we are flawed 
and our motives are often flawed and until we realize that and until we accept Jesus Christ we are not going to heaven you cannot work your way to heaven you cannot work your way past the pearly gates okay in the end the judgment is going to be on your motives so make sure that your motives are right make sure that they are pure make sure that they are what they should be because if they're not and there's a there's there's a, there's a real really really rude awakening coming your way so in verses 11 or 10 and 11 uh you know he, solomon talks about the uh the the weights and the and the uh the the king's decisions and the weights here you got to understand back in the day uh, merchants used balances and scales uh, to weigh out uh, precious metals. They didn't have coins. They didn't have dollar bills. They had, they had you know, a certain amount of gold or a certain amount of silver, a certain weight, uh, you, know, you know, four ounces or four half ounces. Or, uh, you know, and and as, as coinage developed, it was, it was by weight. The coin, the size of the coin, it wasn't so much this, the physical dimension, but how much... How much did the coin weigh? And a lot of times, these merchants would 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 kind of kind of I'll call it pad the weights that went in the scales or in the balance, and so that uh, you know that they had you know they had this supposedly standard four gram weight, and they would put it on there. Well. And that four gram weight might be just a little bit heavy, so the customer had to add more weight of silver and gold into the uh, in, into the onto the other side of the scale. And you know that that merchant would skim, and he might not be skimming much, but he would be skimming. And again, it's uh, those those kind of balances and scales and those that that weighing back and forth of of I'm going to do this so that I can get that. That's that's an abomination. Uh, that's that's not God's will. That's not how God wants us to be. So then, moving on to uh, uh, to, to ver chapter sixteen, verse three, and then and then verses six and seven, uh, we have blessings assured. Commit your activities to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Iniquity is atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness. And one turns from evil by the fear of the Lord. When a person's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So again, at the beginning of the, uh, of the chapter, you know, at the beginning of the section, it says, commit your activities to the Lord and your plans will be established. In other words, before, before you go out the door, before you go on the interview, before you go to church, before you, uh, before you get in the pulpit, commit your activities to the Lord. And, and your plans will be established. Because if you are committing your activity, the first thing you're going to do is say, Lord, what am I supposed to do? You're not going to make that decision and they say, okay, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. Bless it. That's, that's not how this works. First, say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Seek his direction. Have the right motive. Say, Lord, I want to please you. I want to, I want to do what you want me to do. And then your plans will be established and your, your, everything will fall together and everything will work and it'll be just as it should be. Uh, I find that I find that with, uh, with, with this online uh, uh, with this online Bible study quite often. Uh, you know, maybe I'm not quite in the right place before I start and uh, I may have to, I may have to restart the recording three or four times before uh, uh, before before I'm really I've, I've really got myself in that right place to say, OK, Lord, this is this is what you want me doing. And I'm going to do it, and Lord, I need I need your help to make it happen, and uh, and He makes it happen. I don't. I just I just I just sit here and run my mouth. <laughs> you know, I read the material. I study the material. And I, I I put the slide deck together and and, and I present it. And you know, it's 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 what I feel Lord wanting me to do right now. And so my my motive behind it has nothing to do with me. Um, you know, the first couple of weeks, in fact, that I did this, uh, I I wasn't even on the camera, and uh, I got a had had several people say hey you know we want to be able to we want to be able to see you and it's like okay well fine uh, you know so here's, you know, here's my kitchen in the background <laughs> and, uh, but anyway it's uh, 
you know, as we as we as we grow this ministry, I think I think God's going to use it. I think there's going to be a lot of good things come out of it because our activities were committed to the Lord, and 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 He will establish uh, the plans and the, and the and the, the activities, and and the, He will use this to to His glory in the end. And then it has that iniquity is uh, is atoned for, is atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness, and and basically it's uh, um, you know, our our loyalty and faithfulness to God in uh, in no way guarantees or, or or earns us our salvation, but it does show that it does show our commitment, and it shows our love for God, and it and it that living we want to live for him you know it doesn't and living for god doesn't mean that that uh, things are always going to turn out the way that we want um it doesn't mean that life's going to be hunky dory don't believe don't believe the uh, live your best life now uh you know everything's dandy dandy uh, except jesus and everything's going to be wonderful gloriful and and if it's not wonderful for you then you must not be a christian and there's something wrong with you no if if you're a Christian, trust me, there are people that are going to persecute you because you're a Christian. There are people that are going to hammer on you because, and every time you make a mistake, they are going to point it out to you. Well, that's not, that's not the very Christian thing. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of, a lot of times I'll, you know, I'll put something on Facebook that, you know, maybe kind of, kind of stretches uh, what some people like to hear or want to hear and say, well, that's not the, that's not a very Christian thing to say. It's like, you know what, what would you know? When was the last time you had a relationship with God? And because I know some of those people that that are, that, that that poke at the fact of uh, of of some of these things that says, so well, that's not a very Christian thing. I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. It's like, what would you know about it? My relationship with God is my relationship with God. Yours is yours. Mine isn't your business. Yours isn't my business. But at the same time, it's 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 all around motives, and it and it comes back to that when our when our ways please the Lord, when we're doing what he wants us to be doing, things will be essentially in our favor all the time. And lastly, let's close out. I'm going to give you a, a few closing, a couple of closing contexts, contexts, if you will. First of all, the believers demonstrate wisdom by seeking to please God in all that they do. You know, as part of part of understanding God's wisdom is part of understanding what makes God happy. And if you understand one, you, you understand both. Number two, all people are accountable to the sovereign God, good or bad, good, bad, or indifferent, right or wrong. We are accountable. And, you know, and in this day and age, uh, there's a lot of people that, that, that don't want to be held accountable for their own actions. They, they really don't. But in the long run, you know, we are all held accountable eventually. Number three, pleasing God is born out of a right relationship with him and, and uh, is seen in right attitudes and actions. You know, just doing the right thing doesn't mean you're a Christian, but if you're a Christian, you're going to do the right thing. You know, they, they kind of cross back and forth there. And last of all, God's blessings on those who please him are seen in him giving stability, rescuing from sin, and peaceful relationships with others. And, and again, it, it, it comes to, to having God in your heart, having the Holy Spirit in your life, and what you, what you feel and what is your motive is going to come through, and it's going to come through in your entire life. And it's going to, it's going to bless you and benefit you in the long run. Well, folks, I, I appreciate you uh, joining us again this week, and uh, I always appreciate you being with us, and uh, uh, we'll pray for everyone out there, and uh, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you again thanking you for the time that we've had together, time to study your word, time to, to delve into it, and uh, hopefully... Uh, your word has uh, has gone out and uh, will be will be a blessing to someone out there in the audience at some point. And Father, I pray that you would keep us all uh, 
on the straight and narrow. Keep us focused on you. Keep our motives pure and uh, bring us back again. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.